Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, today, let's talk about another song segment from the live action version of The Little Mermaid. It's the classic song sung by the antagonist character Ursula called Poor Unfortunate Souls. So let's see if Ursula's performance feels genuine, natural, and immersive. I'm sure most of you are familiar with the plot. So in this song, Ursula deceives Ariel and convinces her to make a deal, trading her voice for three days as a human. If Ariel fails to receive true love's kiss from the prince during this time, she will become Ursula's slave. So now let's take a look at this song performed by Melissa Ann McCarthy, who also portrays the character. So let's watch it together and discuss. My dear, <laughs> it's what I do. It's what I live for. I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me, well, a witch. Okay, so right from the beginning, there's already something uh, worth mentioning. So before she starts singing, she says something like, "Oh, this is what I what I do, what I live for," right? So she first mentions that it's what she does, and and then she begins to sing. Pay attention to the volume of her speech beforehand. It's basically at a level where the person in front of you can hear. So that's because Ariel is right in front of her. So when she starts singing, she maintains the same volume. So I often mention that this volume is actually the easiest level for us to find our best voice range and also a less tiring one. Actually, when we sing, we don't necessarily have to show、uh, I'm going to sing now or I'm going to perform now. So in fact, we're just using this singing form to tell a story, and therefore. I believe her transition is very well done. She goes from normal speaking to narrating a story using her singing voice. So she remains in this speaking state, which feels like a conversation. So let's look at it again. My dear, <laughs> it's what I do. It's what I live for. I admit that in the past I've been a nasty. They weren't kidding when they called me well. A witch. Additionally, I think Melissa's portrayal of the villain is very natural. When I say natural, I mean that as an antagonist, it doesn't always have to be obviously showing scary teeth and claws. So ah, I'm a villain. So for example, so when she says this,、uh, they they weren't kidding when they called me well a witch, right? So some people might think that a villain should be all evil and menacing. Is they weren't kidding when they called me well a witch? But actually. That wouldn't feel as natural. So for her, as the evil character, she, she just like、um, just the casual remark that others would find terrifying. So,、uh, but for a villain character, it's just something very normal and ordinary to say. So when we look at Melissa McCarthy's performance as Ursula, so there are no unnecessary facial expressions. So that's what I consider the most、uh, natural state for an antagonist. Let's carry on. But you'll find that nowadays I've mended all my ways. Repentance in the light and made a switch. True. Yes. True. Yes. So the yes sound isn't loud. And I fortunately know a little magic. It's a talent that I always have possessed. And here lately, please don't lie. On behalf of the miserable, lonely, and depressed, pathetic. Okay, you see, in this part, there's a bit of that evil sorcerer we usually associate with. He uses certain language and a tone to manipulate others' thoughts. So that kind of miserable, lonely, and depressed, then pathetic. So the changing tone reveals that sense of uh, uh, evil manipulation towards others' thoughts, and pathetic isn't overly exaggerated. So she is kind of after delivering such tone, and then comes the pathetic. So it's I think it's a very natural portrayal. Pathetic. Unfortunate souls in pain. In This one longing to be thinner. That one wants to get the girl. And do I help him? Yes, indeed. 
Okay, so this kind of、uh, this part belongs to the pretending to be kind appearance. So for her, it's just her most natural linguistic state. Yes, I do. Okay, let's see. That look at that subtle, satisfied smile. I think Melissa captures the facial expression、uh, very well in this detail. So also the、uh, coordination of eye contact and facial expression is seamless.、Um, so why do I often talk about facial expressions and eye contact? Let's think about what our facial expressions and eye contact represent. So. In my view, they represent the corresponding visuals in your mind that align with the lyrics you are singing. So mindset affects expressions. So when when your mindset is in place, naturally the facial as well as body expressions and eye contact you display will subsequently affect your vocal performance. So when we hear someone singing voice is very moving. I believe it's not just because they have a beautiful voice,、uh, good techniques, but because their entire being is immersed in conveying the meaning of the lyrics. Okay, now let's continue. Now it's happened once or twice. Someone couldn't pay the price, and I'm afraid I had to rake 'em across the coals. Okay, at this point, I'm afraid I had to rake them across the coals. So, in other words, actually, she actually, she actually said something terrifying. It's like if you can't pay the price, fine, then I'll make you suffer. But as an evil character, she didn't say it like if you can't pay the price, I'll make you suffer. So, without showing that kind of fierceness, so on the contrary, she's. She said it in a very soft voice. So the more frightening effect is that she didn't deliberately act. She said it in a softer voice. I'm afraid I had to rake them across the coals. So actually, which makes it even scarier. Yes, I've had the odd complaint, but on the whole, I've been a saint. Okay. This part shows that yes, I'm a saint. Okay, and I'm not really that bad. She has to portray this high and mighty feeling, as if about to make a grand announcement. Overall, I am a saint. Okay, <laughs> let's carry on. Okay, so let's see here. This also displays a kind of dominance. Hurry up! I don't have much time. I don't have to do this. I don't have time. Hurry up! So actually, because a previous part of the video was、uh, omitted, so skipping a conversation in the middle. So Ariel actually hesitates a bit and worries if what she is doing is wrong. So sometimes the evil side uses angry words and an impatient tone to urge you to make a decision quickly, or else you are out. So that's why I think Melissa、uh, nailed it with her eye contact, voice, and overall expressions. Well, the changing eye contact is really quick here. She was just talking to Ariel, and now she's talking to her two minions. So the portrayal of eye contact is crucial in acting, especially if you are voice actor behind the scenes rather than an actor on screen.、Uh, you have to try to match your voice with the character's eye expression because、uh, eye expression represents what you are thinking. So you you express what you think. Now I got a boss. The boss is on the road.
Okay, so I think there's a resonance between this and what we previously、uh, discussed about Vanessa's trick, which is that when villains are almost impatient and crazy, there's a tone as if I'm singing while also shouting, like "Poor unfortunate souls," and that kind of "ows." Okay, so it truly showcases her devilish and that throwing feeling, throwing the voice. Okay, here there is a gaze with a very powerful presence. So many evil sorcerer characters need to have this kind of gaze, and the same goes for us in voice acting. So even behind the scenes, we have to get the same gaze right to make that sound. Okay, so that evil gaze and laughter are finally here. It's kind of like I finally got what I wanted. Okay, so、um, yeah. Okay, so I think Melissa's portrayal of Ursula is very mature in terms of vocal performance and other expressions.、Uh, I think it's it's about not being all fierce and menacing as a villain. So her portrayal of natural evil is just right. That's what I believe. I emphasize this point a lot in my、uh, voice training program. So, when doing voice acting, you must first understand that you are not forcing yourself to perform correctly. So, you are just you are actually there, just telling someone something, and behind the message you are sharing, the corresponding imagery should appear in your mind. So, the appearance of that imagery will be reflected in your eyes. So, the expressiveness of your eye performance is important. So, it means that your mental state and other expressions need to be unified and aligned with the plot, and also coupled with singing techniques.、Uh, it can result in the performance that is both natural and emotionally touching for the audience, while the voice performance sounds technically professional as well. So. Today I kind of、uh, discussed the performance of the song from this perspective. So if you have any thoughts about the topics we discussed today,、uh, feel free to leave a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please remember to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. So also, if you like our content,、uh, please like and share.、Uh, if you have other shows you'd like me to discuss, feel free to leave a comment as well. So and that's all for today. So we'll meet again next time. Bye.